We live in a world in which when we run into something that we can't handle, something where we're hurt or others are hurt, we turn to vengeance. How can we really reconcile that with the forgiving spirit of Jesus? My name is Father Mike Manning. I'm a Catholic priest. I'm coming to you with a deep desire for you to understand the message of Jesus as it seems to be relevant to our world today, a world that oftentimes is going in crazy directions. There's a power of Christ that is going to bring peace and security into your life, and that's what I'm trying to get across to you. I'm sharing with you a, a, a thought from a book that I've recently written. It's called The 15 Faces of God. It's a, um, as it says here, it's a quest to know God through the parables of Jesus. I'm believing that Jesus loved his Father deeply. And from that love, uh, when we start to understand parables, which were a vital part of Jesus' teaching, both Matthew and Mark say that he only taught in parables, we can get an insight into who God really is in our life. Well, one of the aspects of God that I think is important is that God is forgiving. Now, the topic of forgiveness is really tough, but as I'm kind of pledged to do, let me share with you this thought of coming to forgiveness through what Jesus wants to share through one of his parables. Now, one time, it seems, Jesus was um, invited to come over to the house of a Pharisee. Now. Remember, whenever you hear the word Pharisee, you're thinking, oh, these are people that are really antagonistic toward Jesus. But this man, who, whose name was Simon, seemed to be open to Jesus, and Jesus was open to the man, and he came over to his house. Now, when, when they ate in, at Jesus' time, it wasn't sitting down at a square table or a round table like we do, but what they did was they would lie on, on cushions. And oftentimes they would form like a U with the cushions, kind of like with spokes of a wheel shooting out from this U. And then in the middle of that U is where the servants would bring food and whatnot. So you'd be lying on the couch and you'd, you'd reach out and you'd go into the middle of that area and you'd grab your meat or you'd grab your, your vegetables or your, your rice or whatever it was, and you'd do that. Of course, they didn't eat with any knives and forks in Jesus' time, and they would just use their hands. Well, so here we have the scene. Jesus has come over to this person's house, and uh, Simon is, is stretched out, and Jesus is stretched out, when all of a sudden, a woman comes in. Now, she's a woman who, as the Scripture tells us, is a sinful woman. Um, one of the aspects of being a sinful woman was that she, she exposed her hair. Um, in, the, in the time of Jesus, it wasn't permitted, especially in public or with strangers, to have your hair exposed. And so we probably get an indication from the comment of being a sinner by other people. She was probably a prostitute. She was known around town as this kind of person. So she comes walking into the, into the scene, and here we've got this, this holy rabbi Jesus, and we've got this holy man Simon, and probably a whole bunch of holy people lying down. And she comes in, and oh, in a fabulous scene, she comes down, and she goes to Jesus' feet. Now remember, he's, he's stretched out, and his, he's got bare feet now, just stretched out there, ready to eat. And she's crying. Oh, she's crying with with great veracity, and the tears are just flowing down. And what she does is she leans over, and the tears that she's crying falls on Jesus' feet. And then after that happens, this is what she does because her hair is exposed, she pulls out that hair, and she probably had it down to her waist, if not longer, and she comes and she washes and then dries his feet with her hair. Isn't this something? Here we've got this sobbing woman, and we've got the tears falling on his feet, 
and then reaching down with her hair and she dries his feet. Now, in addition to that, she has a large, large uh, container of oil. Now, it was a very precious oil, something that she probably spent a great deal of money on. And she brings it in and she takes the oil and she pours the oil over the feet of Jesus and then caresses it and kisses the feet of Jesus. <laughs> I don't know about you. What a wonderful scene. What a, what a wonderful thought of an insight into this moment in the Jesus, Jesus life of this woman coming in and in the midst of all these people does this. Well, as this is going on, Simon and the other people who are the upright um, followers of God are very indignant that Jesus is allowing this sinful woman, this rejected woman, to, to do that to his feet. Well, Jesus knows, knows the thought of the man, and he says, Simon, that was the man who had invited to come over, I have something to say to you. Boom, he said, okay. And this is where the parable comes. And he said, there was once a man who owed 500 days wages. So this is like a year and a half wages to a person. But another person only owed five days wages. Well, he looked at both of them and he said, he came to the conclusion that they were going to be able to pay the, uh, the debt that they owed. And so, with great magnanimity, he forgives them. He forgives the entire debt. Oh, great. And Jesus asked the question, now, which do you think loved the man more, <laughs> the one that was forgiven the 500 days wages, or the man who was forgiven five days wages? Well, Simon didn't have to think very much about that. He said, well, of course it would be the man who had the 500 days wages. And Jesus said, look what you did. I came into your house. You didn't give me anything to wash my feet. You didn't give oil for my, for my feet. You didn't kiss me at all. And yet this woman has come in and with her tears, she's washed my feet and with her hair, she's dried it. She's kissed my feet and then she's anointed them with oil. And you and I both know that she's a sinner. But because she has been forgiven for many things, she loves even more. Be beautiful thing, isn't it? And that, so he gives us the moral of, the, of that beautiful parable. Those of us that know what sin is all about, those of us who have failed in big ways, the word of forgiveness comes to us and says, ah, <laughs> I can be loved, I can be forgiven by God, just as this woman was. Oh, and Jesus then turns to this woman, who again is still probably sobbing, and she's having to put up with the dirty looks of the, the men that are around. He says, with great love, your sins are forgiven. Oh, I love that story. It's one of my favorite in the Bible because it shows the great tenderness of Jesus, the, the openness to this beautiful touch of a woman and the the care that she had for him, and the ability of Jesus to accept that. And it's a shouting message, and this is the, the object of my book, it's a shouting message of an aspect of God that we really need to digest into our hearts, that God is willing to forgive us. Now, the difficulty with this word forgiveness is, ooh, it's hard for us to accept it's hard for us to accept that we're forgiven. Why is it that we, we especially if something has happened very serious in our life, why is it that we push away that aspect of forgiveness? So many times we, we spend our times thinking about, oh, that one sin that I did, and I hurt myself, and I hurt other people, and I probably caused a great disruption in the world. And for, for us to really believe that God can forgive us is so hard. Maybe it's because 
we find oftentimes it's hard to forgive the people that have hurt us. You and I both know that we run into people that have hurt us very much, have embarrassed us, have physically hurt us. And what do we do? We push that off. We push them off and we are very, very slow in giving forgiveness. And we kind of think, now I'm shouting at you saying as the parable says, hey, remember, remember that you are forgiven by God. And we think, oh, I don't know. I don't think that God can forgive me. Because deep in my heart, it's so hard for me to forgive other people. But then, but then we're overwhelmed with this concept of forgiveness, especially as we look at the life of Jesus. Remember, remember the parable of the, of the uh, prodigal son? A wonderful story of a, of a man who, who leaves his father, who takes all the family treasure and runs off and spends it on, on, on uh, prostitutes and all kind of sinful things. And yet God the Father in the image of the Father is waiting for his son and allowing the son to come back and be able to be received once again into the family. I'm going to come back to you just a moment. I've got a little thing I want to share with you about uh, some of the, the offers for you. But stay tuned because I've got some more things that I want to say to you about this challenge of accepting God's forgiveness and letting God's love touch our hearts. Please stay tuned. We'll be right back. I have written a new book and I'm excited for you to have it. It's called, get this title, Five Seconds a Day to a Successful Marriage. I know you probably didn't hear that, but it's really five seconds a day to a successful marriage. I have in this book the key to allowing your marriage, if you're madly in love, to get better. If your marriage perhaps has reached a plateau and you're, you're not growing anymore, this can bring new life and hope. And even if your marriage has really gone beyond the realm of possible joy and growth, this can be the answer to bringing new life into your marriage. I try to understand what's going on in marriages. What are some of the problems? Is it money? Is it communication? And what about five seconds? Uh, what does it mean, only five seconds? Five seconds in our life can change our life. If a doctor comes up to you and says, I'm sorry, you have cancer. Oh, five seconds, it could change the whole direction of your life. Someone walks up to you and says, you just won the lottery. Whoa, your whole life can be changed. Or someone comes to you and says, I love you. That can be the change. Please, I want you to have this book for yourself or perhaps for people in your life that you know that are struggling in their marriage. The title again is Five Seconds a Day to a Successful Marriage. Look on your screen. You see all the information of how you can call in right now or you can send for email, you can send by mail. And please, for only $8 or more if you can, this book can be yours and believe me, in five seconds, your life will be changed. I want to talk to you about God breaking into your life and saying to you, I forgive you. And again, if we could hear that voice of God speaking to us that and saying that, what peace that could give, what security that could give, that all these things that we've done in the past can be turned away and we can be forgiven. We can be accepted by God right now. Oh, and I know that we struggle with that. We've talked about that. We struggle with accepting God's forgiveness because the memory and the guilt and the feeling of things that we've done in the past so are with us. And yet the message today, the message of this, this woman who is forgiven of her sins and Jesus giving the parable about the, the 500 days wages being forgiven and because of that enormous thing, forgiveness and love become stronger. God breaks in and says, I love you and I forgive you. And I want you to hear the story of the prodigal son. I want you to hear that father reaching out to that son who had just 
thrown away everything that was sacred in the family. Or the woman, remember the woman caught in adultery? Well, the law of Moses said this person should die. And they're bringing her up ready to stone her to death. And Jesus is willing to forgive her in strong contrast to the vengeful action of the, the law, what it says. I think also whenever we think of forgiveness, of the beauty of the cross. Imagine this. Imagine the terrible thing that the cross was involved with. First the whipping, then the stripping, and then nails put in his hands and feet. And he's hanging up, dying on a cross. And I don't know about you, but having been treated that way would fill me with so much anger and so much so much desire to bring vengeance on those that had hurt me. And what is the word that Christ gives? Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. A beautiful tone for us of this overwhelming image of forgiveness in our life, forgiveness in your life, forgiveness in my life, of a God who breaks into me and brings me great peace. When, as I think of this challenge of forgiveness, I think of the, the terrible enslavement that happens when we don't forgive. You and I both know that when someone has hurt us and this, this reality is in our heart and it's in our gut, so many times that can color our whole life. You know? Maybe, maybe we're, we're abused. You know? So many women are abused sexually. Uh, but maybe as a child we were abused also with violence. Maybe you've been, been abandoned. <laughs> And maybe there's this whole thought of terror and the burden of that. And we, we walk around with unforgiveness in our life and it becomes a burden. It can even, it can even make, our, make our body bend over because we really can't believe that we're loved. I had an experience in my own life one time. I remember I was with a whole bunch of my fellow priests and I was getting a chance to be able to share some of my excitement about the work that I do with television and the, the writing and whatnot, and I was all set to go. And, and all of a sudden, a person who I thought was a friend stood up and started putting me down and just going on it with, with, a, with a real shaking vengeance of saying how, how unprofessional I was and how poor I was and all the things that were going, going wrong. And he went on for, gosh, for about 15 minutes of just putting me down. Whoa. <laughs> I, I can remember that when that happened, I was so overwhelmed, I didn't know what to say. And so I was supposed to speak next. And so my time came and I had prepared what I was going to say. And so I opened my notes and I just kind of went through what I was doing, not responding in any way to what he had said. But oh my, the hurt of that was so, so painful. And to be honest with you, I carried it around for years. And then I started thinking, I need to let go of this. And I'm happy to say that I was able to meet him uh, at another time, and there was a real moment of, of reconciliation, a real moment of support that we shared with one another. And that was so, so important for letting go of the burden of unforgiveness. For us to be able to come up also in our life to come up to someone and say, I'm sorry for what I did for you, and to open that word of I'm sorry to bring about forgiveness. It's such a freeing reality. And we want that. We want that, that, that experience in our life. But now, I'm talking about forgiveness and I'm talking about my own experiences and my struggles, but I will admit that sometimes forgiveness seems impossible. The deep hurt that we've had is so overwhelming, we just can't come back and really find the reality of forgiveness in our life. So what do you do? What do you do? When Forgiveness seems impossible when there's a, there's a, a moat <laughs> that is so big that it's unable to be able to cr be crossed. Well, do this. Come to God. 
be aware of the burden, be aware of the desire for, for forgiveness, and then I ask you just very quietly to, to talk to God, to tell God of how difficult this is and what a, what a burden that it, this is, and ask God's help. Let's do that right now. If you've been listening to me, would you pray with me? Maybe there's something that you feel in your own heart of forgiveness that you're, you're not able to, to embrace. God, help me please to let go of this pain that's in my heart. I've been hurt. I've been hurt, and I've also hurt others. Give me the grace of forgiveness. Give me your blessing of forgiveness. I need your help so, so valiantly. Amen. Well, the other aspect of forgiveness is that sometimes it's easy. Sometimes it is hard, but then at another time we might all of a sudden come up with, a, with, a, with the courage and we walk up and say, I'm sorry. And then someone says, I forgive you. And boom, everything is straightened out. But a lot of times, too, the, the road to forgiveness is a process. It takes a long time. Sometimes I, I might have to say something very small and maybe, maybe just the initial little step of seeking forgiveness can be a monumental thing. <laughs> just a little step can be monumental. But rest with this idea of forgiveness sometimes being a process. I'm, I'm asking you to not let the burden of unforgiveness overwhelm you. Take the offensive. Take control. And don't allow this, this feeling to overwhelm you. Take that small step. Maybe it's send a card to that person. Maybe it's greet them on the street. But most of all, make sure that you're open with a real sense of generosity to the moment of allowing that forgiveness to come into your life. Be open to allowing forgiveness to happen. And again, remember, this forgiveness might be something which is, it might be something which is just really, really tough in our lives. But little by little, be open to that power and allow the blessing of God to turn you inside out and upside down. Now, I've tried to share with you some important thoughts. First of all, that the God we believe in is a God filled with forgiveness. And although we struggle with forgiveness, if we fight it and we really do everything we can to, to forgive others, to forgive ourselves, and even to forgive God, and I'm going to be talking to you about that in coming weeks, it's possible because we have the wonderful example of the forgiveness of Jesus with the prodigal son, with the woman caught in adultery, and even the crying words of Jesus from the cross, Father, forgive them. Brothers and sisters, God's forgiveness is ours. All we have to do is reach out and say, I accept it. I have written a new book for you, and it has an impossible title, Five Seconds a Day to a Successful Marriage. Impossible, huh? No. This can be a key to, to bringing new life if you're madly in love with your partner. But maybe you've reached a plateau and things aren't growing the way they should. Maybe even you're separated and things seem hopeless. I want to tell you that with this book, and with the five seconds of challenge, your marriage can turn into a great, great experience of love and power. Please, look right on the screen. There's where you can get in touch with us and you can order this book for only $8 or more if you can. I wanna send this to you and I wanna allow your marriage to come to new life and new hope. Remember, five seconds a day to a successful marriage. Do it. We're speaking today about the importance of forgiveness in our own life, and I'm hoping that what I'm saying to you about God's forgiveness of you 
can really touch the basis of who you are and free you from perhaps a burden of not forgiving yourself, not forgiving others, or even not forgiving God. Allow, allow what I've said to you to shake you deep in your heart with the peace and the security that only God can give. And please, may I ask you, would you get in touch with me? Uh, there's, a, there's an address on the screen that you can send an email to. You can call on the telephone because I'd love to hear from you. Or you can perhaps just um, open up your heart right now and talk to God with prayer, and that would be a beautiful communication for me. But so many people are writing to me and, and letting me know about their prayer intentions, and I'm asking you, would you please pray with us as part of a, a, part of a family, if you will, a, a family right here with the program, coming ever closer to, to the Lord. This is uh, a lady from California. Her son is very ill. Uh, Marie, she's in Long Island, New York. She has a grandson who's 29 who has a problem at work. There's anger and, and there's a lot of struggle with that and perhaps some unforgiveness. Bernie from Georgia. Uh, her mother has just died and, and she's looking for a job, so some tough things. Pray with me, would you? Let's pray, I'm, uh, and I'm going to pray for your intentions as well as these. But again, please stay in touch. Lord, come into all of these experiences and touch them especially with your forgiveness because forgiveness is one of the greatest keys to healing. And may Jesus' love for you always make you smile. There is no Without his cross, there is no crown. Lamb of God, you bring salvation, and with your grace our hearts are sealed. Lord, with your tears of love, you Without his cross.